when the spiritual comes into the natural it manifests but we bring it in there but when it, it comes into a place or a moment of time when we are in a service where there's worship where the glory of God comes in it is heaven invading time eternity invading time the spiritual invading the natural the kairos invading the chronos are you guys with me God's time invading your time which has a suddenly explosion which results in a manifestation of the glory of God and there will always be results you're gonna to see tonight uh, uh, this morning one encounter and or the result of an encounter always changes a person's identity it changes their calling and their authority or it reveals it manifests their identity their calling and their authority are you guys with me so when somebody said i had an encounter in my room and and they were just the same they had nothing in their room or if they fell over when we prayed for them and they might have fallen over but nothing has happened when you have an encounter whether it's an angel whether it is god himself or jesus walking into your room or a heavenly being visiting you whatever heavenly beings ancient ones old ones holy watchers visited daniel and shared secrets with him daniel carried something what we call mantles of the ancients are you guys with me there's a move that is coming back into the nation of south africa that is going to cause prophets to have the ability to see again because sight has been removed for so long which means there's an ability of sight that is coming to the body of christ to understand secrets and hidden things mysteries ancient riddles ancient things things that has been kept hidden for a time such as this for a people such as this that it has been given to you and not to others are you guys with me have your seats have your seats and i want to welcome everybody that is online we had a big cut somebody switched off our internet and uh you know so uh with that we lose a lot of people a lot of things so so welcome back and it's getting to a thousand it'll go further just now and we have a big online church despite the church that is uh, in our physical locations as well and i think we have from tomorrow we're going to have uh, cape town also coming up and we have people flying in from other places we had people from port elizabeth from east london from cape town from durban uh, in krugerstorp and it will be in centurion and obviously united states pastor kevin is welcome from G georgia statsboro uh, encounter and um Go with me to Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. Matthew 13, verse 11. I don't want to waste time. I want us to get into this immediately. Matthew chapter number 13. And if you see a glitch, there's a technical error still on the live stream. We just want to ask you to bear with us and have patience. Although some won't, but that is okay. Um, just bear and have patience. There's some glitches that is taking place every time. So the screen goes on and off all the time. Okay, so uh, there's nothing they said to me they can do about it. Um, Matthew 13 verse 11 listen to this he answered and said to them so they were asking Jesus disciples was asking him uh, they were saying oh, uh, why do you always speak in parables why do you always speak in parables and um, Jesus answered them by saying the following he said, because it has been given to you. He says, there's a people that I've chosen and I have decided to whom is allowed to listen and hear mysteries. It has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it has not been given. So say with me, given. So we see revelation mysteries. The word mysteries there is hidden and secret and unknown things. Are you guys with me? Hidden and secret and unknown things. That's what the word mysteries there, mysterion in the Greek. Hidden, secrets, and unknown things. Meaning God has chosen it in His sovereignty. To say that this revelation is a gift I'm giving to someone. 
when your eyes are open, when you have the ability to be in a service such as this and even understand what we are preaching, it has been given to you. And those who don't understand, it has not been given to them. And usually the veil of religion will cover that we cannot receive revelation. Are you guys with me? Some people in worship, they'll just stand like this. You don't know God. I, do, I know God on the inside. Shut up. The Bible says, if you know Him, your hands will show it. Lifting up of holy hands. Your body language will show it. Everything. There will be a, there will be a posture that you'll have in worship when you love God. Are you guys with How do you love your spouse? Just over the phone. That's how some people are uh, with God. So what happens when they worship and they stand and they worship like this? They have no revelation yet of worship. And maybe somebody can tell them lift up their hands. They lift up their hands, but in their heart they have no revelation. God is waiting for the heart to become pleasing to Him. To give revelation. You cannot even give money to God properly without having a revelation. What is a revelation? It is a leaping of your spirits. It is an unveiling, a lifting up. It is an opening of the lid. Something that has always been there but has been hidden. It has been, you are unable to see it. You were not allowed to see it. It was not given to you to see it until God finds you to come to a place where he realizes, but wait, this one now is pleasing to me. I will open their eyes. They couldn't, the disciples on the road of Emmaus could not even see Jesus walking. When they were walking right next to him, after he was raised from the dead, they spoke to him like a mere man. Are you guys with me? They spoke to him like a mere man. And then when he had supper with them afterwards, the Bible says, and then their eyes were opened. And they realized who they were with. So you have the ability to see without seeing and to hear without hearing. So you have the ability to see us standing in the service but not see Jesus. Or an angel can stand here and you might not see it until your eyes are opened. Or they would look at Jesus and saw Him as a mere man. Are you guys with me? Because their eyes were not opened yet. Then the Bible says, and then... Their eyes were open. What eyes? The eyes of the Spirit. Blepo eyes. Prophetic eyes. Eyes that give you the ability to see beyond. Eyes that give you the ability to perceive and recognize what is a gift inside of somebody. That am I standing in front of a mere man or am I standing in front of Jesus? Are you guys with me? He came as, Habeshus, he came as the carpenter's little boy, Joseph's little boy. And yet, his own hometown just perceived him to be such. And they were unable to receive anything. Even his own family said he's a madman. They called him a fraud. And a con man, a con artist, is the exact words, and a fraud. Why do you think they always say ministers are in fraud? Even Jesus was said he was in fraud. Because they were seeing with eyes that are natural, not eyes that are spiritual. They were looking, I believe it was Apostle Nebel who said last week, that we do not regard one another after the flesh. As the book of Corinthians says, we regard one another after the Spirit. Why? Then I can see the gift of God. So God will choose and use somebody unlikely, whom people do not accept, don't want to accept, do not approve, so that they cannot see, so that they cannot receive. Jesus said, I speak in parables. So that these people cannot get saved and their sins cannot be forgiven. 
You think I'm lying. Let's go to Mark 4, 11. Mark 4, 11. Zedanon. Hmm. Listen to this. And he said to them, again, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the parables of God. But to those who are outside, say with me, outside. So you can be in or out. All things come in parables. He says, to them that are outside, all they hear is riddles and parables. But to you it is made open and plainly. Something that is simple, they cannot even understand. Because their hearts are darkened. Now go back. Where they were. All things are going to come in parables. Next verse. So that seeing they may see but not perceive. Hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. Let me change that. Let me put it in, in right English. Um. I speak in parables so that they cannot understand what I'm saying just in case they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. We preach a wrong Jesus. When it gets to Christianity, there are dimensions, there's mysteries, there's secrets. Yes, the gospel is for everyone to get saved. I understand what I'm saying. Actually, the word you convert speaks of... Uh, it, it doesn't speak of the conversion of salvation. It speaks of the word turn. Let me rather say like the word turn means to convert. The word convert there is speaking more. This was scholars are saying one school of the scholars saying it means salvation. The other school is saying it means just a transformation that is taking place. Either or, it's horrible. Meaning that God is saying, I don't, I'm hidden, hiding secrets from you because I don't want you to change. I don't want your sins to be forgiven you. Why? They were not forgiving the sins of others. They were holding their sins against others by living under the law. So their sins could not be forgiven. Are you guys with me? But we're speaking here about dimensions. We are speaking about the ability to see. So Jesus was looking for disciples and people who were, who were able to see. Those who are the Pharisees and the Sadducees could not see because of religion. Religion has caused a veil to come upon their eyes. When people sit in churches where the letter is preached with no spirit, death is put on them. What do I mean by revelation? That the word I'm preaching to you this morning I heard from heaven just even this morning. Are you guys with me? It is a now word for the church. It is a now word for God, from God for you. We're going to be speaking about anointing. Say with me anointings. Say mantles. And say systems. I know it might sound complicated right now. But we'll get to it now. Have your seats. Have your seats. Ancient mantles. Let me say it rather like this. There are men who carry anointings. There are men who carry mantles. And there are men who carry systems. Let me rephrase it. There are men of men and women of God who carry anointings or those who are going to become ministers. But they are Christians. They are believers. They carry anointings. Others carry mantles. Others are what we call a system. And I'm going to show it to you out of Scripture. And everything as I'm doing is preparation for the conference, for as we go tonight, Tonight, uh, so that we can go higher tonight, Monday night, and Tuesday night. Are you guys with me? Um, uh, last week, I think last week, Sunday morning, in Kruger's Door, we were preaching on altars, the evening on gates. And it's all in relation to dimensions. Because it's something that God spoke to me in this conference, is altars, gates, uh, 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 mantles, anointing systems, dimensions. It is good to sit in a large church and everything is prim and proper excellence are you guys with me 
I mean, for everything is excellent. I'm not even speaking of religion. It is not religious. It's excellent. But it lacks depth. Everything about Christianity is about depth. Jesus said to Peter, go cast your nets into the deep. A lot of people cast their nets in the shallow. They become shallow. Everything, when you go with God, like I believe for Paul's levels, you don't go higher, you go deeper. Paul says the width, the length, the height, the breadth of the love of Christ. Speaking about a dimension that you go into, not above. Are you guys with me? Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock. And the door shall be open to you to come inside, to go deeper. So Christianity is speaking about dimensions. The closer you get to God, the deeper you become as a person of substance. The more depth your words carry, the more depth there will be in an atmosphere. Are you guys with me? I've had so many ministers and preachers, and some of them might have very big names, say to me, Oh, Alun, you know, you're always too much about the prophetic. Just calm down about the prophetic. Stay in your lane. We celebrate your lane, you celebrate our lane. You cannot have one part or two parts of the body. You need all parts of the body. And if God has decided to give that to us as a church, even though we focus on evangelism and we have many evangelists on the streets and etc. The grace that is given is for there to be a prophetic atmosphere. What is a prophetic atmosphere? It means that in that atmosphere you'll be able to receive. A church that's not prophetic will not jump up on their feet and be able to receive. They might jump out of emotions, but it's not spirit meeting spirit. It's not depth calling out to depth. Deep to deep. Are you guys with me? Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. It is something you will feel here. It is something you will feel here. If you don't feel it here, you must check yourself, check your spirits, because you might be missing a river or revival or this Holy Spirit. Have a seat, have a seat. Are you guys with me? What opens up this year? Revelation. Who are unable to receive revelation? Those who are unable to recognize or perceive a vessel that carries it, a movement or an altar that carries it. So some might come into a church and think, ah, this is just a normal church. So because of that, they cannot tap into it. They cannot. Jesus getting to his own hometown. The Bible says he could not do any great miracle. God himself limited in the flesh. Limited God who is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. Could not do any miracle in his own hometown. Which means there was something that limited God. It was the unbelief of people. Are you guys with me? That if there's one thing in me that can limit God, it is the unbelief that is in me. I can limit Him from moving in my life. What is He looking for? He's looking for faith. What is faith? Faith is a substance. It's not wishful thinking or positive confession. It is a substance. It is something that is given to you at the moment of salvation. Whether it is small or it is a lot, all of us have been allotted a measure of faith. It is a physical substance. When you get to heaven, you'll see faith like you can see water here. Are you guys with me? It is a substance. To each, it is the currency of heaven. To each has been allotted a portion. But faith is something that is real in you. Why do I say it is a substance? The Bible says that Paul could see faith on someone. Jesus could see who had faith or not. Faith is something that is seen. It's not an action. It's not shouting or jumping or anything. It is a physical, spiritual substance that can be seen by spiritual men. They can have one look at somebody 
and they can see a substance on them whether there's faith or not. And when there is not, it becomes displeasing to God. Even sitting in their presence becomes offensive to God. Because the Bible says there's one thing that pleases Him. Say with me, faith. So what displeases Him? The lack of it. Are you guys with me? I don't know where we are going. I'm just talking. Okay. So say with me, faith. It is a substance from heaven. It is something that can be received by the hearing of the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So how do I receive this physical spiritual substance? By hearing the word of God on me. The whole time or sitting in a place like this. Even though I don't understand. Just believe. You will understand later on. Faith does not require you to understand first. Faith will give you the ability to know. Say with me, know. There's just a knowing in your spirit that you know that you know that God is in this place. You know breakthrough is coming to my family or breakthrough is coming to my life. You know I am not leaving this conference the same. I am not leaving the Voice of God conference the same person. I'm going in a higher dimension. I'm going into a deeper dimension. Say with me deeper. Say higher. Listen. Have your seats. Have your seats. So, listen, listen. Where, where were we? He gives mysteries to those who are given. It is given to those who are, say with me, inside. And then those who are outside, it is not given. Who are those who are outside? It is those who are unable to see. They don't have the ability to enter in. Are you guys with me? They can even sit here, but they're outside. They can be inside, but they can outside. The eyes can see me, but they cannot perceive me. The eyes can see me, but they might not perceive the gift in me. They can say, maybe, you know, is a good speaker or a bad speaker. I don't know what, but they, I, I thank God. You know, I might not be the best orator or the best uh, ability to articulate even the simplest of revelation I get. But I thank God that there's an anointing, that there's a grace, there's a mantle, and that everything in my heart pursues a system, which you'll understand now. Are you guys with me? So I'm giving you these things. Uh, if you come as a, just a normal religious church Sunday, you're going to be highly disappointed. If you, um, if you came as... as uh, to be because of the conference you will you will receive so that your spirit can be expectant um, so so just to get say with me anointings say mantles say say as systems i think last week we spoke about uh, altars and uh, let me explain why we spoke and and tonight I'm going to get into something a little bit uh, deeper and uh, 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 and we're going to be ministering like I, I think we're going to be ministering already I want to get the word through now because every night we're going to be ministering a lot so I don't want to there to be no word at all so I'll minister to one or two this morning but uh, tonight we're going to minister please do not miss one evening now I spoke about altars. Why is it necessary to have a physical altar in your home? What I meant by an altar is a secret place. It is a place where, uh, it is a place that is designated unto God. I'm not speaking of building an altar for a sacrifice. I'm saying having a place that is designated to God. It is a place where angels dwell. You see, angels are legalistic in nature. Angels or Old Testament to a degree. They come from the Old Testament. Angels understand the protocols of God, of sacrifices, taking incense to, or to His throne. To bring, just to bring a prayer in front of Him, they knew, they know that they have to take the incense. Then there's a certain protocol in heaven they have to get through to get to Him. Angels understand being around His throne, all they can sing is holy, holy, holy. Are you guys with me? So angels are very, uh, very, 
legalistic, very programmatic in their minds. They, very, they understand processes and protocols. That's why the moment you have an altar in your house, a secret place, it is a place of transaction. It is a place where angels dwell and are designated to bring your prayers to the throne of God. It is the place where angels catch your prayers and deliver it like balls to the, to the, to the throne of God. Are you guys with me? On the altar of incense. It is the place where Matthew chapter number 6 says, the secret place. It is the place where God dwells. It says, go into your secret place and shut the door behind you. Go into the secret where your father dwells. It is the place where God lives. Yet, we kind of like undermine this principle. Are you guys with me? I can be sitting in our living room and it is okay. I can be in our bedroom and it is okay. I can sit outside even and pray and it's okay. But when I go to my place which I've designated to God, which is where I have my office, that's where I have my prayer room, my study. When I go there, the presence of God is already there. I can just sit, I can just raise my hands. He is there. It's not like I have to wait for goosebumps. The goosebumps is there once I sit there. My spirit can in a moment surrender. Why? It's a place where there's a ladder put there. A portal between heaven and earth. It is the place of Jacob. The place of the gateway to heaven. Bethel, the house of God. The supernatural. Where angels ascend and angels descend. It is an altar you build. It is a place you anoint. Jacob anointed the stone. And said, this is where I've seen God face to face. Are you guys with me? It is a private place where you are alone. So, so that's the importance of, of, uh, of altars. Meaning that it was a custom and a way of control in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the Bible says we have become living stones. Jacob in the Old Testament, what did he do? He put a stone under his head. And he had a dream and he anointed that stone. And that stone represented a gateway, an altar. Are you guys with me? An altar that had a gateway. Yet the book of Peter says we are now living stones. With Christ being the cornerstone. Which means that I am a living altar wherever I'm going. And then you get altars that are higher and altars that are lower. That's why kings knew to go to high places in mountains to go to altars that are higher than others. So you have some altars that have greater connection to God than other altars. Let me rephrase it. You have some churches that has greater connection to God than other churches. You have some men of God that has greater connection to God than others, some other ministers. What is your altar? What is the place where angels, where you know, but wait, I can connect with God. Have a seat, have a seat. You're going to see how we're going to connect this. And what I'm getting to this morning's message is the importance of the body of Christ. As strange as what it sounds from where we're starting. Are you guys with me? Because God refuses to work outside of the vessel of a man. God refuses not saying God cannot. God refuses to work outside of a vessel of a man and a woman. Because it is His laws He has put into place. When we speak on dimensionality, we can understand that a higher dimension cannot reach a lower dimension without becoming the lower dimension. You cannot. Because the lower dimension cannot comprehend a higher dimension. God would stand in front of you and you wouldn't even know what is happening. And He's not a higher dimension. He, he is, all dimensions are in Him. The Bible says, he, in Him is eternities and eternities. Everlasting and everlastings. If you thought there were one eternity, the Bible says eternities are in Him. 
everlasting from everlasting are inside of him. Are you guys with me? So no, God is not an alien that's just coming from the fourth dimension. No, no, no. We're just using that as an example. And by the way, with all these sightings and things that are happening, it's not conspiracy theories. And even if it is, it's still prophecy being fulfilled. So when you see Fox News, CNN just showing alien visitations, alien, I think they released over 15,000 doc pages of a, a document with over 15,000 pages of uh, alien activity. They had to last year release it, or the year before that, 2020. And don't find it strange. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the days of my coming. Are you guys with me? So then the... That then the NASA employs priests, theologians, a theologians, recruits theologians to discuss and go on to a project on whether how humanity will respond once they discover there are alien life out there. Now, first of all, we don't have to worry. There is no alien life out there in terms of the universe as we know it. Because that's our dimension anyway. That's why they can't find anything as far as they've gone. They can't find anything. But the Bible never spoke about aliens coming from outer space. It spoke about interdimensional beings, which is demonic or angelic. That's it. No, some other thing. Okay? It is those two things. And they, they recruited them. It just was released in the newspapers now. Why would they do that? Whenever a, um, whenever, a, uh, whenever a people, especially those who would go and to go on discoveries or to uh, colonize or to, they would, uh, um, they would go on journeys. And or when something, even when it comes to a war, when something tragic would happen to a people or they would discover a group of people that has maybe not had any touch with mankind. One of the first protocols is that they have to get in touch with them spiritually, with their spiritual leader or their priest, for them to prepare the people. Anyway. So, the theologians answered them and said, uh, it won't be a surprise to our faith, to believe, because they understand they are over a billion Christians. They said, it won't be a surprise because our Bible speaks of it and is full of it. Um, you know, uh, it's not like, oh, we, uh, no, 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 our Bible is full of it. We know that Jesus' return is very soon. Not one prophecy has to be fulfilled anymore. People are like, yeah, the temple has to be built. And they think a temple is going to take 100 years to build. In China, they're building things in two days, three days, hospitals. So that temple can be built in a week. Are you guys with me? So when I'm speaking about prophecies being fulfilled, I'm not using the temple. Everything has been fulfilled. That is how soon coming His return is. Or the rapture is. And His return. Are you guys with me? So altars. So we were by altars. And I want to get to systems. I'm not going to be able to, 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 to fully get into it this morning. But let's get into it on a few points. Uh, so with the anointings. Same mantles. And say systems. So you have ancient mantles. Okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me get over. Let me, let me get something here. Uh, go with me. Put on the screen for me. Daniel 5 verse 11. Daniel 5 11. Ancient mantles. There is a man in your kingdom. In whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. Another translation says, light and wisdom, such as is among the gods, dwells in this man. They said when we looked at Daniel, Daniel was equal to, or he was compared and in the class with magicians, with soothsayers, with diviners, with flesh eaters. 
Are you guys with me? Those were the witchcraft that was going on there. And Daniel was put into the claws of them by the king. But they said these words that is a higher one. Because he carries light and wisdom. From, that is the same as such as of God's. And he has the Holy Spirit upon him. He has the Spirit of the Holy God upon him. They knew he was in the class of magicians. But something made him higher. Are you guys with me? Don't find it surprising when they say, is Leon a psychic or not? As they're posting all over. Oh, is Leon Asso traveling or not? Do you know, if we have to have a public conversation... If me and two or three prophets, real genuine prophets, have to talk in public with what we talk in private, I will have no church left. <laughs> you cannot explain, and I cannot expect, people, a pastor or a teacher or an evangelist, to understand. I cannot expect a maths teacher to understand science. And I cannot understand a... Uh, a grade 12 math teacher. Oh no, I cannot expect a grade 1 math teacher to understand grade 12 maths. Or teach grade 12 maths. Remember all they said like that. Are you guys with me? So, so when you try to again, like I say, try to articulate a spiritual experience is very difficult. Especially for prophets. I cannot even, uh, I cannot even share 5%. Because people will, people classed Samuel next to the uh, 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 next to the psychics of his day as they went and consulted psychics they consulted samuel but they knew what was the difference he was inspired you know they obviously say we are cold reading hot reading and all this stuff and no, it's okay it's fine but what is the difference there's an insp get, get a cold reader or a hot reader put them next to us let's see Maybe they, get, they do their reading thing. But one will be inspired and one will not. One will have authority and one not. Now if you cannot discern that, you are so far gone. So you'll see them saying psychic and this and that. Don't worry, they said it about Daniel as well. But he had the spirit of the Holy God in him. What would I say to people if I tell them the angels that I've seen and how some of them have looked like? If I told them the language that they were speaking, how they were talking, what they were saying, the language, if I tell people the language that angels spoke, they already think that we are wrong or that we are off. But then I can go to another prophet and they'll tell you the same thing. And we might have never met one another. Are you guys with me? I was speaking to one prophet about an angelic encounter I had. And I told them, this is how the angel looks like. This is how it looks like. This is how his hands looks like. This is how it looked inside his hands, inside his fingers. This is how it looked inside his body. And the person says, go read my book there and there and there. And uh, where I wrote about my encounter, exactly the same, point by point. We are speaking spiritual things. And you cannot sit with an evangelist trying to explain these things. They'll say to you, oh, you angel worship. Go get soul saved. <laughs> then they go home. They're like, Lord, please, I want to see an angel. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, where are we? Where are we? Say with me, systems. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. There was a system. Let's go to, um, uh, 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 let me explain. And I'm going to use some scriptures to, to, to explain some things, but... Uh, I'm going to get a few points through. We'll be finished. Half was 11. And uh, I need to get this through to you. And as I'm talking, I'm already laying a foundation for the message. But systems. You have men that carry anointings. Men that carry mantles. And men that carry systems. A man that carries a system is different to a man that carries a mantle or an anointing. An anointing is great. A mantle is brilliant. But a system is something that is now being followed. It is, a, it is a process that is being put through. 
and is called upon generations thereafter to say, look at this man as an example. His life became a system. Let me give you an example. Jesus knew that there was a system he had to follow when he came into the earth. When he came to John the Baptist, he said, I need to be baptized by you. I must be baptized by you. Meaning that they were cousins their whole life. Are you telling me he didn't know he was the Christ? He didn't. Because it was at that moment he looked at his cousin, which was always his cousin. And all of a sudden he realized that he was the Christ. But John implemented a system to find the Christ. He started baptizing people there. And the moment he found Christ and he baptized him, you don't read of baptism anymore until in the church age. Why? It was used as a principle or as a method, a tool, just to find the Christ. Are you guys with me? And the moment he found him, Jesus knew I had to submit to you. But how did John find the Christ and how did Christ find John? There had to be a perception. Even though John was baptizing, Jesus looked and saw a prophet. So we call him John the Baptist. But it was John the prophet. And when he looked at Jesus, he realized he was the Christ. Are you guys with me? The Messiah will take away the sins of the world. And when he did, how did he do it? Say with the perception. He had eyes that could see. And then we see the moment... He, uh, the moment he does it, a voice comes out of heaven and says, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew, and then we go to Matthew 17 verse 3 and we see again another voice. Same voice at another time, saying the same words. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. But it goes further. It says, Hear him. Are you guys with me? What is he saying? He says, listen, another voice must announce you. You can never announce yourself. It would be self-appointed. There must be another voice that announces you. Are you guys with me? First, it was John that was there. That was announcing the Christ to everybody that when he was coming there. Saying, behold, the lamb who has take away, who was taking away the sins of the world. Pointing towards him, announcing him. Then God's voice coming out of the heavens, announcing him. Are you guys with me? So say with me, systems. And then it is just like where, where Jesus understood the art of submitting and yielding to John. Even though he was greater than John. But he knew for the system to operate, he had to yield and submit to him there. To go further. And the moment he did it, the moment he lowered himself lower than John, you see John's head cut off. Because God will never allow two heads to rule at the same time. John's time was over. Are you guys with me? John's time was over. Meaning that uh, when Jesus came onto the scene and he was announced, we see the spirit of Jezebel coming in. Another evil system. Jezebel was a system. It was a woman in the Old Testament. But it was a spirit and a system. That even when she died. She manifested again as Herod's daughter. To kill the spirit of Elijah. And whenever the spirit of Elijah manifests. The system of Jezebel comes in what is happening right now it is before the return of Jesus Christ the spirit of Elijah is on the earth again that is why you'll see a prophetic voice is raised up all over the world why the system of Elijah it's Elijah has to precede the coming of Christ but when Elijah comes Jezebel is on the scene 
So the moment John was finished with Jesus and Jesus' ministry was taking off, there were two heads now. And God said, I cannot, don't, I don't have any creature or anything with two heads as a monster. And John's head had to be cut. John's ministry had to end so that Jesus' ministry could go on. There's a great resignation in the world right now. But the Lord said to me these words yesterday. As I was in prayer, I heard the words, as I was just lying in prayer, I heard the words, the Lord saying, there's a great resignation in the world, but there's a great transition in the church. The likes that you have never seen before. And many shall see a transitioning of glory taking place where mantles will begin to fall because things are shifting. Are you guys with me? Have you have your seats? Have your seats. So say with me systems. So you have a system of Jezebel, it's an evil system manifesting. Then you have a system of Delilah. What is it? It is a system of seduction to seduce great men of God. I've seen ministers fall into adultery, one after the other, after the other, after the other. I've warned some of them, prophesied to some of them. We've seen them fall with other men even. Okay. It's the system of Deliah that takes out men of great strength. Are you guys with me? So then you have what we call the system of, um, you have the system of Nimrod. And we see how when the Tower of Babel was built, he found a system to get into heaven. And that system is still being used today. We see that spirit still being used today. We can see how the spirit of Antichrist was in him. And the spirit of Antichrist is again today. But it's a system. But they are good systems. Say with you, good systems. So you can go to, uh, 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 for example, go with me to Isaiah 51 verse 2. I want to get these few points through. We've got a few minutes left. Isaiah 51 verse 2. Listen. And another system that God uses is what we call the system of Abraham. Abraham became a system. Listen to this. Isaiah 51 verse 2. Look. Say with me, look. He says, I want you to look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone. Say with me, alone. God is saying, I don't want you to look at anybody else. I want you to look at one man who has made it. And look at him as an example. It is him alone. Are you guys with me? Next verse. And blessed him and increased him. Look at go be one. He, go, go back. Go back. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Guys, move with me, please. And blessed him and increased him. God is saying, I want you. When it comes to blessings, I have a blessing system already that is in place. And that system came through a man, which really means a man started with an anointing. Then he went to a mantle. And from a mantle, he went to a calling. Once he touched a calling, uh, sorry, from a mantle, he went into a system. Once he touched a system, he now became a case study for other believers to follow. Where they'll say that if you don't do it the way you, that man do it, you're doing it wrong. If you don't prophesy the way that one prophesied, you're prophesying wrong. If you don't cast out devils by the way that one cast out devils, you're doing it wrong. He became a system and an example for people to follow. Are you guys with me? There are systems even today. I'll show you now. Say with me a system. Let's go to, let's go to, uh, let's go to Psalm 24 verse 1. I want to show you. I want to show you another one. It's called the system of Jacob. The system to encounter God. Listen to this. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Let's go to verse 6. Listen to this. For this is Jacob. 
Say with me, this is Jacob. The generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. He says, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now Jacob has become a generation. Synonymous to a generation who seeks the face of God. He says, this one is Jacob. It is the one who seeks God. Meaning that once you seek God, now you're called Jacob. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Once you begin to seek the face of God, prophetically, you're called the generation of Jacob. Which means there was one man that saw the face of God, that had such an encounter with him, that generations after him will be called his name when they have an encounter with God. That God says, you cannot encounter me without recognizing Jacob. Have your seats, have your seats. He says, you cannot, you cannot encounter without understanding and recognizing the encounter. It was Jacob who legitimized an encounter with God. And it was an encounter that legitimized Jacob. Because you have God of Abram, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. But it was no God of Jacob until he encountered God. Are you guys with me? Ah. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase for the sake of time. We see in Genesis 28 verse 10, you don't have to go there. We see how Jacob had his first encounter at Bethel. And uh, he had a dream. He put his head on a rock. He had a dream. And he saw angels, a ladder going to heaven. And he saw angels going up and down the ladder. And then he woke up and he said these brutally honest words. He said, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Are you guys with me? Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. But I had no ability to discern or perceive it. I could have been here and, and angels were literally trafficking here up and down in heaven. And I'm standing in my flesh and can't see anything. Which means Jacob was not yet ready for the face-to-face -face encounter with God. So the Lord said, okay, you have to detour still. I'm going to take you to Laban. Get betrayed a bit. Uh, get defrauded for seven years and even more. Uh, get betrayed become hunted uh, until you are so broken so that the second time when you come back to Bethel your spirit can now be sensitive because you're in a place of brokenness your self strength and your self will is depleted you're emptied of yourself are you guys with me? and when he came then to Bethel then the Lord said, now you are ready. And a man met him. Say with me, a man. Amen. And Jacob was so desperate. He said, he grabbed a hold of that man and he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Now please understand, that man did not look like an angel. That man did not look like God. Jacob just knew being at the place where he saw God before angels going up and down. That if any, and the Bible first says this, it says that Jacob went there alone. He let his wife go, he let his kids go, he let his caravan go, he let everything go, his animals. Meaning he got rid of every distraction. And he got to a place of being alone with God. And in that place of being alone, a man came to him, a traveler. Yes, it is God at the end of the story. But at that present moment, it was a normal man for Jacob. Are you guys with me? Who would wrestle with God? No one would wrestle with God. It was a normal man that was beginning to fight him. But he was so broken that he could perceive the gift in this person, which is the angel of the Lord, which was God. 
But he didn't just, he had now eyes to see beyond and to perceive. Not just eyes to see the outside. But he had to go through seasons of brokenness to be able to perceive. Are you guys with me? I was told if I preach these messages, we're not going to grow the church. So I don't know. I beg to differ. But um, I was told that, you know. So I don't know. Say so when I preach these prophetic messages, they just for feel-good messages, you know. It, it takes you into a, a deeper dimension with God. It's called revelation. So, Jacob gets to the place. Now, he grabs a hold of this man because of a season of, he's so desperate. And God is saying, now you're ready for an encounter. And the Bible says, he saw the Lord, he wrote this. This is the, this is the place, Bethel, Peniel, where I've seen God face to face. Where I've seen God's face. It is the place of severe brokenness. But then Jacob became a system. And, he, and it's now God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And everybody that encounters God is called the Jacob generation. Nobody can encounter God without recognizing that Jacob encountered God. He became a system and a case study. Are you guys with me? Zerano. You see, I said earlier, I spoke about identity and calling and authority and office and so on. That we see in the story with Jacob that, he, uh, that the angel of the Lord asked him, he says, what is your name? And it's a very confusing scenario that scholars have their concept of what was going on there. Theologians, I have mine. Um, Can you be possessed by demons? No, yes, yes. Okay, Christian. No, okay. Uh, can a person be possessed by demons? Okay, so let's leave it there. Okay. So maybe one person is going to understand something here. Only those who have eyes to see can see. But I'm not allowed to say. So anyway, when the angel of the Lord said to Jacob, What is your name? The word name there speaks, when they were given names in the Old Testament, it speaks of identity, it speaks of office, and it speaks of authority. Meaning that you don't have an encounter with God without Him changing or establishing an identity, an office, an authority. You don't have an encounter with God without Him, without you leaving that place. And there's an identity and authority and an office that is increased or changed or established upon your life. Some things in those areas will shift. Otherwise, it is, an, it is a made up encounter. It is an emotional experience. But when God comes in, when God visits a man, He changes every aspect about yourself. Are you guys with me? You will leave that place with the ability to become a system. What are we doing with encounter? We are saying this is how you encounter God. So others begin to follow our way of doing things. Or our way of prophesying. Or our way of things. But it's creating a gateway to say that they say that if we do it like that we're going to encounter God. Um, if we do it like that we're going to have successful church. Or we will have the glory of God in our church. It is a system, but it comes via revelation. It is not something I'm planning and working out before to teach you your point by point. I'm speaking from heaven. Have your seats, have your seats. Are you guys with me? Zerano. I will almost finished. Let me just, let me just, I need to, I need to kind of like, 
We have 10 minutes left or so. Say with me the Samuel of, 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 of uh, it's the system of Samuel. Say it again. Say the system of Samuel. Samuel became a system in the prophetic. The Bible says that once Samuel became a prophet, he was born a prophet, but when he ca- once he came onto the scene, that he shifted a prophetic era from where they were once called seers, now they are called prophets. He changed a dispensation. Are you guys with me? What are we doing in South Africa? We are changing dispensations in South Africa. We have gone through much persecution, much embarrassment or public shame, if so you can say it like that. For what? To change a dispensation. Not just to be a family church on a local church here, but to be in every city where people can encounter God or see the prophetic in another in another dimension, in another way. What? Where there's importation of the same DNA that is on this pulpit or even greater. It is a dispensation of change. Why? There's been, obviously, there's been spiritual fathers that has killed. In fact, the older generation have killed all of them. If, let's say 90%, let's give some the benefit of the doubt. 90% so that I don't get attacked and I won't again get uninvited from everywhere and, you know. So those who feel offended, put yourself in the 10%. Um, No, but there's 90% with all seriousness that have become souls to a David. Why? Soul is a system. You cannot get rid of it. It will hunt every David. If you are a David, it will come for you. You can, you can, you can rest, be rest assured on that one. Are you guys with me? So Saul is a system that would repeat itself through generations. It's a system that the enemy is following. Ahab is a system. Um, but we have this Saul generation that would kill David's. And the Lord said that this dispensation, that's what I'm saying, there's a great transition, is over. In the church. Why? Otherwise, you will not see revival in South Africa. Because what I'm getting to is this. Revival cannot come. Graces cannot come. Unless we receive a man. South Africa would not have seen revival or racism come down unless they have seen and received Ray McCauley. Are you guys with me? Okay, but he went through all this marriage problem. That's fine. That's the flaws that will always be there. And I'll explain now. But unless that was tapped into, a grace could not have been received. And how revival leaves a place is when is when uh, the body is disconnected where David's cannot receive from a soul or a soul is not embracing a David or people in general don't understand the incredible value in honoring one another and seeing gifts in one another to know the only way I can get into a higher dimension is by accepting a higher grace why have God taken me from general to general to general and every single one of them that I've been to what happened? importation some for a moment in time others longer but what? for importation and there's not one time when I've left where I've not received something. And I'm not speaking of small guys. But where God would orchestrate something, you know, I would test God. I would just go sit and I explain the story to our church and online members on, in the week. I mean, to our church, uh, uh, all our members that was in an online session this week. Uh, you would have gotten the message. 
And I explained, I went and sat in a 15,000, 10 to 15,000 seater building right at the back. Just sit and just test. You don't test God, but you just, you know, you don't care. If you, if you, if you, have, a, if you have a grace, God will make a way. If, he has, no, if, if you sit there, it's not two days later. I'm finding myself having lunch with the leader of that movement. We raised the dead three times a month. And the first words were, God said, I must impart to you. First words. What is it? It is God taking up a thing to receive and understand. But wait, you cannot do this thing without men. Why, why did God not give it to me just by himself? Why did I fast 40 days and not receive it? Because he uses his body. There's some things that you can fast and pray for for your whole life. You'll never receive them. Yet a man on the inside of that dimension has a key. And all he has to do is wait for your knock. Open the door on the inside. And you just allow. And all it requires is a knocking. It is a knocking. It is your spirit that has the ability to knock. It is where you can sit on your seat right here. And you can just sit and you have the ability to knock. And tap into a dimension. We are not speaking of a physical door. We're speaking of a spiritual door that requires a spiritual knocking. It is a knock that is a demand from your spirit to open up a dimension for you to go into. Are you guys with me? Say with me spiritual things. Have your seats. Have your seats. So Samuel became a system. Uh, 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 let me explain that. Meaning... He was not only a prophet, but he was taken to such a high dimension that God said to him, every word you speak, not one of your words will fall to the ground. Meaning, I will listen to you, Samuel. If you say Saul will be king, you'll be king. Saul was never called as king. God never called Saul as a king. God called Saul as a commander over his people. Samuel decided to make Saul king. Go read your Bible. I, I see people are looking at me. Saul was never supposed to be king. God said, I have called this man to be an, a commander, anoint him to be a commander over my people. And then the people were crying out for a king. And then Samuel didn't hear from God. He just said, are you looking for a king? Here's a king for you. And God said, I will do everything that Saul speaks. Not a one of his words will fall to the ground. So uh, what Samuel speaks. So Samuel became a system. Are you guys with me? So when he got to David, listen to this. He said to his brothers, Eliab thought that he's the one. And Samuel thought he's the one. And God's like, Samuel, let's not make the same mistake that you did again. Because why? Every word you speak, I have to answer. Are you guys with me? So he says, no, 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 not this one. Yes, he looks great. This one, this one must be king. Yes, you made it with Saul, the same mistake. You see, there's a shoulder higher and a head above than everyone else. He's the strongest and the most beautiful. He'll be your king. There's nobody better than him. If you do this with the wrong one here, yeah, that one will be king and will miss. David will miss. And when Saul's time was over, Samuel liked him so much. He mourned over him. And Samuel didn't want to let go of Saul. And he didn't want to anoint David. And if Samuel chose not to anoint David, David would not have been anointed. So it tells you the systems that God puts into people. Where the body of Christ needs one another. David knew he must, he must need a Samuel. Are you guys with me? Without Samuel anointing David, David could not be king. It is the grace that is in a man. Once we catch this reality, listen to me. Revival will break out like you haven't seen it before. Because God is going to put His graces on unusual individuals and peculiar individuals 
all over this nation and even as I said with Australia where the church will not accept them where the church will not recognize them will not accept them as a move of God and you will see how there will be apostles and prophets even from the age of 15 years old to confuse and bring a confusion are you guys with me? have a seat we think what is this thing about apostles and being 15 years old Jesus apostles these 12 disciples whom he called the apostles of the Lamb, the highest order of apostles, were between 15 and 28. Are you guys with me? So, we're getting somewhere, just, 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 because I have to leave also a lot of stuff out that I want to say. Uh, Saul would sin. Saul didn't sin against God. Let me say it like this. Saul didn't disobey God. Saul disobeyed Samuel and lost his kingdom. Samuel said to him, wait for me seven days. And he could not wait seven days. And he saw Samuel as a mere man, not as the voice of God. He saw him as a mere man. They said, ah, we don't have to wait for him. Let's just do it ourselves. We can do it. Okay, so you disregard his instruction. And because of that, because he disobeyed a man, he lost his kingdom. Kingdom was taken away from him. Are you guys with me? Say with me the system of Moses. Moses was a spiritual pattern. He was a spiritual system. Uh, 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 we will see, and as I said, I'm not going to read all the scriptures, but we'll see Aaron and her. What did they have to do? They had to hold up his hands with a rod in. That as long as they held up his hands, the battle, they would be victorious. But the moment his hands would drop, it would not be victorious. Why could Aaron not just take the rod and let they lift up their hands? Saying, but Moses is getting tired. Let's just take the rod and we lift up our hands. Because there's a system in a man. Where God said it must be this way. Gehazi giving his rod to his servant. Saying, go he lay it on the sick and heal it. Heal them, that boy that was dead. Raise him from the dead. And Elisha's servant takes the rod and he lays it and nothing happens. So he took the rod and the instruction of a man of God laid it on the body and nothing happened because the grace is not in the rod the grace was in the man are you guys understand what I'm saying if Moses rod was thrown on the floor and became a serpent if Aaron did it if somebody else, it would not have happened unless the one unless of God are you guys with me Uh, we're not speaking of uh, let me just I want to get to a point we're not speaking of man worship I'm speaking of the body of Christ that is needed that is needed in a uh, that is there to be needed from one another meaning unless we understand but wait in the book of Corinthians it says these words and like I said I'm just paraphrasing the scriptures not really paraphrasing I'm quoting them but uh, it says, for, some have fallen sick when they took communion because they did not discern the Lord's body. Some were fallen sick and even died, slept. Because they did not discern the Lord's body. They did not discern the importance of the gifts in the bodies and the diversities and the multiplicity in the body. And realize, even if I meet a fellow believer... There's something in them that I can honor. There's a gift in them. What has God put in them? Are you guys with me? Tonight we're going to get into ancient mantles and we're going to pray for people. Specifically for that. We're going to minister to you. So if you take... If you take... Uh, Kenneth... If you take Kenneth Hagen, for example, 
He is a spiritual, he became a spiritual system for faith, which you cannot remove. You cannot bypass him. If you touch, if you read anything about the subject of faith, it will trace back to him. It is a system that God is using. You cannot be an evangelist anywhere in the world without recognizing Reinhard Bonnke as an evangelist. Why? Because he became a system. Are you guys with me? You cannot heal the sick without recognizing the anointing and celebrating the anointing that is on Benny Hinn's life. It doesn't matter where they've made mistakes or so. Why? Because it, they became to a place with God where they became a system and God is saying, now you have reached such a level with me. I'm going to use you as a case study that everyone that comes after you has to do the way that you do it for that gift to operate. If they want to see healing operate, they have to do it the way you do it. Are you guys with me? Why do we swing a jacket? Benny Hinn swung a jacket. Why does it work? He became a system. It is spiritual systems, patterns that God has put in that cannot be ignored because Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Meaning that in the imitation, that if I see this person moving like this to move in the anointing, the trick is in doing that. Because the instruction was given to imitate. Are you guys with me? I have your seats. But imitation without relationship is divination. Okay. Well, let me say it like this. Imitation without importation is, is divination. Let me rather say it like that way. Go through to 2 Corinthians uh, 4 verse 7. Listen. So knowing the bodies or knowing one another, there are men that will mess up. It doesn't even matter sometimes what sin they have. You look at David. He's the system of worship. That God said, I give you the key of worship, the key of David. And he became the system when it comes to worshiping God. Are you guys with me? Yet he slept with a woman, killed his best friend, a good friend of his, and in turn killed how many people? Yet God still chose to use him. But we have this treasure. Seventh, we have this gift in earthen vessels. Say earthen vessels. It doesn't say heavenly vessels. It doesn't say perf perfect vessels. It says broken and earthly clay vessels. Meaning that the gift that I'm giving you will come in a vessel of a man or a woman. And they'll be messed up in some areas. You will even see the weaknesses in him. But there is a treasure in there. Listen. It's like... Go Judges 14 verse 14. Go Judges 14 verse 14. Let me close off with this. Zedano. Go Judges 14 verse 14. Are you guys with me? So listen to this. I'll close off with this. So this was Samson, I believe, at his wedding. Uh, where... He spoke these words, or at the celebration with his new wife, where um, he spoke these words, and people were mad at him, and he said these words, Out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet. What was he speaking there in a riddle? He was speaking about a moment earlier, previously, where he slain a lion, and then he left the lion there for about seven days. And he thought of just walking past there to see if the lion is still there. The carcass is there. And he got there and he found a carcass of a lion there. With bees inside the carcass. Making honey. Are you guys with me? And he took the honey outside of the carcass. And he brought it to his parents. And they ate and they celebrated with him. But if they knew where the honey would come from. They would not have received the gift. But Samson chose to find something sweet inside something that was smelling rotten in a carcass that should not be accepted on the outside. 
And for bees to be in there was a supernatural act. Bees would not give a tree up to go into a rotten carcass to make honey. So they gave something up. So it speaks of an act of God. What does it speak of? It speaks of the fivefold giftings where God gave gifts to men. And as I say, that mantles is going to fall. Because the Bible says, as he ascended on high, he gave gifts to men from on high that fell down onto the earth. And as that had happened then with an ascension dish with the fivefold, it is happening still today. It, are you guys with me? There are people in this building that has been given gifts. Or there are people here that is going to receive gifts. But he has given gifts to men. On an earthly vessel, there will be a honey found in you. If you can look and say, but my situation looks horrible. There's honey somewhere in the midst of there. It doesn't matter if your business is giving up. Honey is in there. It doesn't matter if your pastor or your minister or your church pastor is saying, but he's amazing. There's honey somewhere in there. Can you ignore the flaws and see the treasure and see the honey that is inside? Listen, as you stand, as you keep standing, as you keep standing, Mary, Mary was pregnant, was with child, as the Bible says. Now, I want you to understand this. Say with the honey in the caucus. When Mary was pregnant, it was seen as sin. It was controversy. It was shame and embarrassment. And it was probably never really rectified. We call her now a virgin. But even after the child was born, the people were thinking he was born out of wedlock. That the Holy Ghost, you will find him in places of controversy. That great men and women of God is birthed in places of controversy. In areas that looks like it is sinful, shameful, and embarrassed. It doesn't matter what shameful act or embarrassing act you've had. The Bible says she gave birth to a son. Meaning that in this time when it looks like everything is chaotic on the outside, it is the Holy Ghost beginning to work. When a church is being persecuted... I told you like we were persecuted and it's not even the start of it. It is a birthing process of something great. Whenever anything is persecuted, you must know that God is close by. No one persecutes anything that is not of God. They persecute those things which is of God. Are you guys with me? So when they put us in the newspaper, so when they put us on TV, I was just rejoicing because I was waiting for the moment to say, but wait, this is... A rampart. This is a launching pad to where God is going to take us. But not only me. If I'm being persecuted, it means something is going to be birthed in those whose hearts are connected in this place. Or who can see beyond the flesh into a gift. Or can see beyond my failures and my inabilities into a gift. That I know beyond a shadow of a doubt how God will bless. You see, how does a gift work? God will always make somebody be frail. You'll give somebody an inability and a weakness. Like Jacob, he broke his hip or put a limp in his hip. So that he can always say that there's something you cannot do unless you are encountered with God. And I always had this saying, I always say to people and big preacher and friends of mine, and so, I always say to them, you know, look, I'm just waiting for this thing to end. Kind of like, it's, I'll just tell everybody it's been a good run. You know, and... Uh, because I have no ability to have done this and I have no ability to do it again. And I had this question for years in my head. Like, if something has to happen, it's, I, I cannot do this again because it was never. I, and then the Lord, you know, I, I, we would think we just struck it lucky. That ministry would just be, and not that we are successful, but that we are, um, that we are, uh, 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 that we are, that we are, um, that God has found grace among us at least. And God has chosen us to use us. 
and you as Encounter Church and to take the DNA that is here and impart it to others. It's by His grace. And then, you know, when I, I said that question for about three years, and then the Lord said to me in my prayer room, He says, my grace is sufficient for you. But then He goes on, He says, He goes to where Paul says, He says, um, uh, uh, get me the verse in, um, I'll close off with this. I got a new Bible here, so I'm not going to find it now. Give me the verse where it says that, where it speaks about the labor. I, I, I labor more than them all. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians? Yeah, I think it is that one. Fifteen verse? Ten. Yeah. So let me read from verse nine. Listen to this. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace towards me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. I, was, I said these words to the Lord. And before knowing this verse, I knew the verse, but I didn't know it. My eyes was not open to it. I said to people, I said, you know, we just worked so hard because we were scared of like losing what we have. And uh, so he goes on, he says, I labored more abundantly than they all. Yeah. But the grace of God which was with me, uh, 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 sorry, I, I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not me, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preached and so you believed. And the Lord said to me, you have not worked for this thing. It is by my grace. This is election by grace. Are you guys with me? It is, a, it, your life is election, it is if you can get this year, this revelation of resting in the secret place, you will understand that the grace of God will work for you. Are you guys with me? Have your seats quick. Have your seats quick. You will understand that the grace of God is working for you. Sorry, I went over time. And uh, um, they've taken up the offering, eh? I want to ask. My apologies. Stand on my feet again. I'm going to ask, this is uh, just something we used to do and we feel led to do it again. And we just feel led to do it sometimes. But I felt led to do it strongly this morning. And uh, it's going to be a quick prayer. But I want everyone. Mm. Nah, we'll do it tonight. Because everyone's going to come out. So let me just do it, do it tonight. Let's just minister to one or two people. Let's go into a gentle worship song. Oh 
Black hair. That's blonde. So the Lord spoke to me about your son. Where is he? Is he here? Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Because you were there on the floor. As I walked away, the Lord said, minister to a son that needs deliverance and that needs freedom. I saw him right in front of me, bound up. I saw his mouth shut. For the Lord is saying, the witchcraft that has come into this family and the words of witchcraft that has come into this family. I'm going to cause great desolation for the words of witchcraft that has tried to destroy. But you will see a reuniting, you'll see a restoration, and you'll see things that has been lost that I will cause the enemy to pay back, says the Spirit of the Lord. For where curses wanted to come in with drinking and with this and with drugs and with things like this to destroy a family and abandonment. For the Lord is saying, my hand and my yard shall return. Because I have seen where you have sown and I've seen where you have given and I've seen where you have worshipped me, says the Lord. For the Lord is saying, I break this curse upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. Luther, now, set it free. Are you married? Is your husband here? Can he come with? Are you not married? Okay. Do you have a daughter, an older daughter? So, I've got a step-son and daughter, and then my own daughter. Okay, which one's the oldest? Megan. Okay, how old is she? 26. 
Can the other one? Seven. Okay. I just see a daughter, as I was speaking to that uh, lady there about a son, I see a daughter that the Lord is saying to me that we must pray for. Uh, okay. And um, what is a stepdaughter? Is it like past marriage? Okay. Okay. So you were married and you were married or not? So it's your daughter? Oh, okay. That's, that's what I mean most. Okay. Okay. That's, <laughs> eh? <laughs> okay. So it's your daughter that's old. Okay. Now. Um, I saw the Lord saying to me as I was walking away with that lady. And I walked past you and I heard with the son. The Lord, the Lord said to me, I must pray for a daughter. And then the Lord is saying with your other children, there's angels that are standing behind them. But one I will raise up that will be very strong spiritually. One I will raise up that will be strong in business. For the Lord is saying that many prayers have gone in for this family as I'm looking. Many prayers have gone in, especially for you, from generations before you. But I saw how the, how the enemy has tried to bring a misrepresentation and has tried to remove the destiny that is in you. Because the Lord is saying about 10 years ago, it's like, I don't know how old you would have been, but let's say 10 years ago. I don't know, I, I, I don't want to be embarrassing by saying, if I say 35, then people get offended. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, uh, okay, so I was always you 10 years ago. 40? 40, okay, so. Uh, I don't want to say 40 because then they're going to say, but you say I'm 50, okay? So, um, let's say 35. It's like between the ages of 35 and 40. I looked and I saw the hand of God. I saw a situ I'm seeing a situation. I saw how the enemy was supposed to take you out, but how God has intervened. Even how the enemy wanted to bring a lot of distraught, remove a lot of things and steal a lot of things. But the Lord is saying, I have been with you even through all these years, but there has been a great betrayal that I'm going to cause healing to come. For the Lord is saying, I'm going to reach out to you like a David, I'm going to reach out and you will be worshipping and your heart will be like a worshipper, says the Spirit of the Lord. For I looked in the area when I looked at you, I see, uh, what's, your, what's your name? Jade. 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 I see there's something in the area of a business for you when it comes to creativity, when it comes to like designing. Or something like that but it's like I'm seeing a storefront specifically or something that is opening I was prophesying this to somebody and they didn't have a storefront I said I see you having a storefront and what God is going to do and they didn't have any possibility of it and I received the message a month later to say they have a storefront and the business is opened and uh, everything but I'm looking I'm, it's like I'm looking into a into a window and I'm seeing mannequins with dresses on, but I'm seeing a design and I see something that the Lord is going to give you, but I see money going through your hands and it's going to open up other areas for you. For I'm looking and I'm seeing a child going into your footsteps and I see how the Lord is going to bring a knit closely knit together. Were you, in a real, you, you were not married before? Not married before. So this is your first marriage, your one. Okay. Where's your father? Is he your parents? Are they alive? Yeah. Uh, give me your hand. For the Lord is going to reach out to your parents. And I'm, look at both of you. I'm seeing prayers that have come from generations before to you. But I also see family being touched by the power of God because of you. For the Lord is saying every form of religion that there might have been, I'm going to tear off. But see how I will not cause a lifting to take place. 
see how I will not cause a blessing that will come in the next two years. When I'm speaking of properties, the Lord is saying, I will bless you, but you'll think, but this is impossible. See how my hand will come upon you because I'm looking the whole time at you and I'm seeing an idea that is going to be given where a business is going to be expanding. Are you in a business or do you work? Do you have your own business or do you work in a business? You do your own business. Do your clothing. Okay. Do you do designing of clothing? What do you, what do, you do? What do you do? Huh? Sorry? I sell new and thrift. Okay, so she sell. But I'm looking at something specifically. When the Lord is saying to me, I'm looking at something. It's like I'm looking and I'm seeing you looking at a design or a pattern or something. And how, a, like I said, an idea. Because the first thing, I was looking at somebody cutting clothes like on those papers. Like cutting a design out. That's the vision I had right in front of me. And it can be very detailed. We were prophesying. You've seen us do many prophecies. Apostle Neville said something. He said, what is the seal of my prophethood? You have seen us prophesying here. Now people can say, okay, but we might know about the past. But how do I know Tonya's future husband? You understand what I'm saying? Even the name. <laughs> huh? Your daughter. We will follow into your footsteps. Okay. So the one that I said. Okay, so... Because I'm seeing, but like I said, you can think we make these things up or so on, but then we can get into prediction. We were on the stage where we said to somebody, we said, I see right now a hand writing and a will being changed. That afternoon, a hand was writing and a will was changed. And like a 15 million rand thing or something was given to them that afternoon. So... The gift must be perceived and discerned. Yes. For the Lord is saying, I shall crown you with glory and honor. But I look at properties and I see the city of Cape Town. Huh? Huh? Okay. You're moving to Cape Town. Okay. If I knew that. Okay. If I, I didn't know that. If I knew that, if I knew that, God can remove my ministry from me now. I promise you. You move to Cape Town. And you can think, okay, maybe my, my guys are spying and giving me, then let's try. Okay. Then let's, let's, no, I'm serious. Because um, let me tell you how I got Cape Town, okay? I look, I just may explain my prophetic language because some people, I see white and white for me is Cape Town. And the Lord said Cape Town. I wanted to say it right in the beginning. When I said properties, I saw properties in Cape Town. And I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. Give me your hands. Zesko ebraske evrede noske teate. Lis akenos cabredo rosca brede le brede na mayo. Masco ebrekena mosca edre de le brodo noske etekena ma. Baptize them with fire, baptize them with the Holy Ghost, fill them afresh in Jesus' mighty name. Fire! Come here. What's your name? Lisa. Where, what, what do you do right now? Are you in? A real estate and personal training. How old are you now? 20. Raise your hands to the Lord. Close your eyes. Stretch your hands out towards the church. When I looked at you, I saw the Lord saying to me, things are going to shift for you. I asked you, why are you doing with work? The Lord said to me, things are going to shift for you in the area of work. But there were things that you have been crying out for. And I... Uh, I'm also standing and I'm looking at a creative, creative site where the enemy has tried to block that and has tried to bring confusion. But I'm looking and I saw a gift of God that is inside of you that needs to come out. A gift, 
a treasure that has been placed in an earthen vessel that the Lord is saying, I'm going to bring out and I'm going to cause this one that is standing in front of me to be so in love with me, says the Lord. I will cause her to fall in love with me. I'll cause her to see my face. I'll cause her to have an encounter with me, says the Spirit of the Lord. Because you will see how I will lift you and you'll minister and pray even for the sick and they'll be healed. But do not want, no, wonder, how, and try to understand how you're going to do these things for it will just happen, says the Lord. And there'll be a knowing in your spirit that it'll happen, says the Spirit of the Lord. And you'll see an anointing coming upon your life that'll lift you. Visions and dreams will increase from this moment. But it may a question be answered, am I called of God? And the Lord is saying, yes, you're called of God. And there's a calling and a mantle that is upon your life and that is awaiting for you. For I'll take you in the process of being used by my spirit. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise of you. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him.